So here are the answers to the very difficult quiz. Depending on how well versed you are in bearing in against back games. So this is what we have here. So five point match and I've queued, but it is very much a situation where I'm bearing in against a very well timed back game with spares on the 20 points so you can come out with sixes and fives. And what you have to be very sensitive to when you're bearing in against back games is your opponent's timing relative to yours. Now, the situation here is that your opponent's got very good timing and there's not really that much you can do about it. That's the first thing you have to accept. But anything that you can do is very welcome. And there are, there's one idea, I mean, there are many ideas that come up in back games and I'm not, um, I'm not uh, skilled enough to know them all as a list. But this demonstrates one of the ideas and that idea is that where you can play a checker to a spare point where it is otherwise redundant and you do so. This checker on the seven point is otherwise redundant. In no time in the near future is it going to be able to be used to make any of these points since white is occupying them. So the, the next logical point that it can occupy is the ace point. Now the reason why you would want to allow this checker to occupy this ace point is because it allows these checkers that are bearing in to hang back and the reason why you want to hang back is because you want to delay the moment that you bear in as much as possible hoping that your opponent's timing has got worse. So your opponent's timing is so good that um, that um, you need to uh, slow down your own timing and relative to his timing, speed his timing up. It's the only way that you can improve your bearing situation. And so the way that you do that, as I've said, is by um, using this idea of being able to play one of these checkers to the ace, ace point. And then with the four, um, you... Uh, take the opportunity to put him back behind the prime. So that sounds like it's contrary to the principle that you want to you want to um, quicken his timing, so make him play more than he should. But if you don't hit, then he's going to be able to come out with most fives and sixes Whereas if you do, you have the additional possibility of him being able to crunch. So although it's true that you want to speed him up by not hitting him, hitting him accomplishes so much that it negates that, that concept. So the right play is therefore to hit and therefore to slot the ace. Let's see what the evaluation says. So the... the we could probably say that the key thing is in this position is to hit, to put him back behind the prime and try and get him to crunch his forward position immediately. But the concept I want to illustrate here is that when you do hit, you need to delay an extra advantage to you is delaying the coming in of your back men. So instead of playing 13-7, you play 7-1 to one like this, leaving his back men back, preserving your timing a little bit Notice that you're only 47% favourite to win the game anyway. So we're just dealing with little margins, margins just to enable you to get a, a, more, um, a more manageable bearing um, and hoping that his timing is, um, is going to get worse. So I'm going to move on to the next position, which I thought was slightly more difficult, 5-1, I think the evaluation is going to be up there already. So um, this I think is a totally different idea and the way I look at it is that you need to be able to see that in this structure 
your three point is accomplishing nothing. In other words, um, it's like a phantom point. In other words, what you're trying to do is to build a prime anywhere from the 11 <clears throat> to the 6 point. And any checkers that don't do that aren't really accomplishing much. So once you know that the checkers need to be on the 11 and 10 points and blocking 6s and 5s and, and things like that, then you know that you can look at this point as, as being almost a phantom point and that you can dissolve it. And the way you dissolve it is just by playing the ace here in board. So that um, if you manage to get your checkers hit back, they can come back in and round and then be used to make the back of the prime. The other thing this accomplishes, of course, is to prevent him from anchoring immediately. Um, that's also a consideration, but that's not the concept I wanted to illustrate. The concept I'm trying to illustrate is the one of this sort of phantom point and dissolving the point so that it can be used more profitably later. And this segues nicely into this play which is even more difficult because you have to be able to spot that even though your you, your opponent doesn't have men on the bar and you're not preventing him from anchoring, you can put a man on the bar and dissolve the point as well. So it's the same concept of being able to spot that this point in board is almost redundant and that it can be dismantled. Perhaps that's a better word. So you need to dismantle the point that's redundant if you can. And not only can you dismantle it, that you can hopefully get your opponent to try and hit one of those those checkers and send them back. Um, and of course, the overarching principle is, like I said, with the with the six four, is that your opponent's timing is too good for you to be able to just come in normally and try and bear in like you would in a normal backgammon game. In normal backgammon, we just come in. We put up checkers on landing points and then we bear them in. But in all these three positions, you have to be able to spot that if you do that, you're likely to um, come in to end up in a position where he's got a very strong board and will have made his five point, a three point, a seven point, and you will end up having to leave shots when he's at his strongest. So having identified that that, that is likely to be the case in this position, you have to try and alter the relative timing of the two sides in order to make your bearing much more manageable and at a time when his board isn't that strong. So the overarching principle in all these plays is changing your opponent's timing. But in this position, just to, to um, re repeat that your dismantling the, the sort of phantom point and hoping for the checkers to be sent back round again and then to try again to break your opponent's timing and it can possibly just carry on like a, a cycle. Um, I've done my best to try and explain. I feel I understand them better than this, this, the concepts better than I've managed to explain them but if anyone wants to um, have a go at explaining them, especially Justin who I've almost forgot to mention who got them all right, but I'm not surprised, who is an extremely strong player. Um, yeah, if anyone, you, Justin, want to have a go at setting out why you think um, the, the, the correct plays are the correct plays, then please feel free to write um, a comment in the com comments box. Okay, thanks for watching.